Today I'm going to speak to you about improving the hydrolytic stability of natural and synthetic esters using polyalkylene glycols. This talk was originally given at STLE in Atlanta uh, in May of 2017. So this talk is going to cover uh, the legislation driving innovation and environmentally acceptable lubricants. You know, why are people looking into these more now? Um, what are our options uh, for environmentally acceptable lubricants? What are the benefits and challenges? We're going to talk about some chemistries uh, for consideration of polyalkylene glycols for use in environmentally acceptable lubricants. And then I'm going to talk to you about our methodology for measuring hydrolytic stability and then what those results were. And then we'll go over some conclusions. So the main driver for looking into environmentally acceptable lubricants uh, is the Vessel General Permit, and that was put out into 2013 by the Environmental um, Protection Agency uh, in the United States. So what that means is that all non-recreational vessels over 79 feet operating in the U.S. territorial waters must use environmentally acceptable lubricants in all oil-to-sea interfaces. And environmentally acceptable lubricants are defined to be biodegradable, minimally toxic, and not bioaccumulative. Uh, they're used in a lot of different places on a boat. So in a mandatory sense, they must be used in stern tubes, controllable pitch propellers, thrusters um, at the bow and stern, and then propulsion thrusters, as well as stabilizers. They're recommended in uh, many deck applications, so on open gears, hydraulic systems, uh, general greasing points, and wire ropes. The United States is not the only place that is interested in uh, protecting their waterways and using environmentally acceptable lubricants for boats. Uh, the European Union has the Eco-Label program. It's a voluntary program, um, but that has many of the same requirements as the VGP in that it, you know, you need to have not your formulation does not contain excluded or limited substances. Uh, it meets aquatic toxicity requirements. Um, it meets biodegradable requirements, but additionally, it also has to have renewable raw materials. Um, and then the lubricant must meet the technical requirements for use as well. Um, the EU and the United States are also joined by China, Germany, Taiwan, Korea, uh, an association of Nordic countries, and Canada in having requirements for uh, lubricants used in marine applications. The lubricants market is a global market. Um, there's more than 100,000 marine vessels and almost 5,000 ports. Market, this market accounts for about $8.5 billion and about 4.7 billion pounds. Um, environmentally acceptable lubricants are maybe 5% of the global lubricant demand, uh, but vessel lubrication accounts for about 20 to 30% of the operational cost of a vessel. This is a highly globalized market. Um, and the leading geography for lubricant demand is Asia. Um, so that's got about 53% of the demand. North America has about 15% and Europe 22%, and then the rest of the world is about 10%. However, 89% of the United States port calls are from foreign vessels. So this U.S. EPA law um, imp impacts the world. So these new regulations aim for a more sustainable marine industry. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity to address lubricant needs in a vessel. Uh, there's a lot of different places that lubricants are used in the marine industry. So there's the crosshead cylinder oil in the engine, um, crosshead slow speed system oil, trunk piston oil, and four stroke high speed oil. There's a lot of ancillary applications as well, stern tubes, controllable pitch propellers, um, ropes have to be lubricated, cranes, winches, valves, propellers, thrusters, turbochargers, turbines, hydraulic systems, there are many. So there's, this is a, a target-rich environment. Um, as I mentioned, environmentally acceptable lubricants are just a small portion of the total consumption. Um, many other oils are mineral oil-based, uh, so system oils, ancillary oils, trunk piston oils, and cylinder oils. Environmentally acceptable lubricants make up about 4% of the market, and that the major portion of that is stern tube oils. <clears throat> so what are your options for environmentally acceptable lubricants right now? Uh, you can use vegetable oils, which are natural esters or, or triglycerides. Uh, these are renewable and biodegradable, but they don't have great uh, cold flow behavior. 
and their thermal oxidative stability can be very challenging. Uh, they're most commonly used in wire rope greases and hydraulic fluids. Synthetic esters are prepared by the esterification of bio-based materials, so they are also renewable, can be biodegradable. Um, they have good low temperature properties and oxidative stability, but they still have some hydrolytic stability issues. Um, these are most commonly used in, as a base oil in hydraulic oils, in stern tube oils, thruster oils, gear lubricants and greases. Um, and then thirdly, we have polyalkylene glycols. Uh, these are homopolymers or copolymers of alkaline oxides. They can be high, highly biodegradable. They have good low temperature properties and good oxidative stability. They have good hydrolytic stability, but they're petroleum-based feedstocks. So they're, not, they're not renewable. Uh, they're most commonly used as non-sheening hydraulic fluid. Polyalkylene glycols are made um, by uh, polymerizing ethylene oxide and propylene oxide uh, into a variety of, of different polymer architectures. Um, these can be alcohol-initiated, monoal, or diol-initiated. Um, and we can make random copolymers, block copolymers. So we have a, a large block of propylene oxide and then a block of ethylene oxide. We can do a reverse block where we do ethylene oxide first and then propylene oxide. Um, we can also make tri-block copolymers where we have a center block of propylene oxide and then we do ethylene oxide off the end. So there's a huge variety of polymer architectures that are possible. And these polymer architectures influence the viscosity index, uh, low temperature properties, and many more things. The, the, the biodegradability is also dependent on polymer structure. As a general rule of thumb, lower molecular weight means more biodegradable. So random copolymers, um, as they have, they are water soluble. Uh, so these, these polymers that we're going to speak about today are generally water soluble. And the EO and PO random copolymer, as it has increasing water added to it, generally the viscosity decreases. Um, there's a little blip here at the beginning, but for the most part, the viscosity decreases. Uh, the same with the 60-40 EOPO copolymer, um, increasing water uh, results in a decrease in kinematic viscosity, so the, the, the mixture is thinned out. Conversely, <clears throat> when you add water to a tri-block copolymer of ethylene oxide, propylene oxide, the viscosity increases. So with increasing weight percent water, the viscosity increases significantly, um, in this, these tri-block copolymers. So that's a very different behavior than from random copolymers. Uh, so what we think happens here is that a secondary structure is building up. Uh, these polymers bind to the water, which may trap the water in lubricant compositions and form some sort of secondary structure that sequesters the water away. So um, there's a couple of different kinds of esters, uh, natural esters. Uh, so this here is an example of a vegetable oil or a triglyceride. They generally have low electrohydynamic, electrohydrodynamic friction. Um, they have high viscosity indices. Um, they are generally biodegradable and renewable, but they don't have good oxidation stability and they are prone to hydrolysis. Um, with synthetic esters, they also have good friction properties and moderate viscosity indices. They are biodegradable and some are renewable. They have better oxidation stability than natural esters, but they're also still prone to hydrolysis. So our, our idea was, can we improve the hydrolytic stability of esters using polyalkylene glycols and their unique ability to retain water and sequester it away? So we decided to evaluate this by uh, using the beverage bottle test. So the ASTM method for this uh, test is listed here on the left, and we made one modification where we decreased the amount of water added, but we added a little bit of amine phosphate to speed along the decomposition of the ester, uh, just to make sure we could see it. Uh, we looked at natural and synthetic esters, so sunflower oil, canola oil, a TMP, polyol ester, and estylide, uh, and then we, we added it with 1, 5, and 10 weight percent polyalkylene glycol. Uh, and the ones that we used were a PO homopolymer, a random copolymers, and tri-block copolymers. And the way that we evaluated whether or not uh, the polyalkylene glycols increased the hydro hydrolytic stability of the solution was we evaluated the total acid number before and after the test and measured the tan change of the oil um, 
to understand the difference before and after the test. So canola oil and um, polyethylene glycols were evaluated, and um, the hydrolytic stability of canola oil, including 10 weight percent polyethylene glycol, um, was tested. So there was no polyethylene glycol added, um, and the tan change was about eight. PO homopolymers, EOPO random copolymers, and EOPO random copolymers with less EO um, increased the hydrolytic stability a little bit of the polyethylene glycol of the sorry of the ester, uh, but um, didn't give quite the same stability as the F, um, EOPO triblock copolymer did. Uh, here. So the EOPO triblock co copolymer provides the highest level of hydrolytic stability improvement in canola oil. And if you recall, this was the triblock copolymer that had um, the, the viscosity increase uh, with the addition of water. So, uh, so far, our hypothesis is holding that the, the copolymers that build structure with water confer hydraulic stability. So again, we evaluated hydrolytic stability by this time of sunflower oil. So with no polyethylene glycol, the tan change was eight. Uh, with the PO homopolymer and the EOPO random copolymer, uh, the tan change um, was a seven or eight, so it didn't wasn't impacted that much. Um, one of the random copolymers did confer some hydrolytic stability improvement, but again, the best was the EOPO uh, 3070 triblock copolymer. So this also provides the highest level of hydrolytic stability improvement in the sunflower oil. Uh, we looked at this with polyol ester. So with no PAG, the tan change was a little bit more than four. And basically, um, all of the homopolymers and random copolymers in this 1090 triblock did not confer uh, any hydrolytic stability improvement to the ester. However, this triblock copolymer did. And this has been the one that has uh, had the good results with the other two esters as well. So this, again, has the highest level of st hydrolytic stability improvement in a polyol ester. Finally, we evaluated estylide and its effect um, when PAGs are added. So with no PAG, um, the tan change was about two and three quarters, which is a lot more stable than the other esters that we looked at. But even with the addition of 3070 triblock copolymer, we did get a bit of a hyd um, hydrolytic stability improvement, even with estylide. Uh, we then evaluated the concentration effect of the triblock copolymer in, um, across the esters that we looked at. So in sunflower oil, um, increasing triblock concentration increases hydrolytic stability. So we have a pretty good trend here. So without any PAG, we have a tan change of eight. With one weight percent PAG, we have a tan change of about six. And then with five weight percent, it's cut in half, so we have a tan change of about three. And then with a tan change of about 1.5 with a 10 weight percent uh, concentration of PAG. In synthetic ester, so the TMP ester and the estylide, um, we evaluated a tan change of about four with no polyethylene glycol. But with five weight percent, we cut that in half about with um, a tan change of two, and then in half again with a tan change of about one. For this, and this is the polyethylene glycol, the 3070 weight uh, copolymer. Um, <clears throat> with acetylide two, you can get away with five weight percent loading over 10 weight percent loading because the change, the improvement that you see over time is. Um, not as not as pronounced with increasing PAG concentration, so you get most of your benefit with five weight percent. But in general, hydrolytic stability of synthetic esters improves with increasing triblock EOPO concentration. Uh, we also have oil soluble polyethylene glycols. Uh, this is a newer product, but these uh, we also wondered if these would improve hydrolytic stability of esters as well. Um, these are generally oil solubility, have oil solubility, so they'll be um, capable of interacting with different esters than the water soluble polyethylene glycols do. And the way these are made is with um, a monoal um, alcohol to initiate it, and these are propylene oxide, butylene oxide, random copolymers. Um, basically, 
you get you build molecular weight to get viscosity, different viscosity grades. So here you can see that with increasing viscosity, you have decreasing biodegra biodegradability. But the ISO 46 and 32 are both um, are both capable of, of, of biodegrading, and they um, are good components for evaluating whether or not they can be used in esters-based environmentally accessible lubricants. So we evaluated the hydrolytic stability of a polyol ester with an OSP. Uh, polyol ester is a TMP trioleate. Um, polyalkylene, this polyalkylene glycol is an oil-soluble polyalkylene glycol that um, is uh, got a viscosity, an isoviscosity of 32, and it's a 10 weight percent loading. So we can see here that this polyol ester has a tan change of about 7, but with 10 weight percent of OSP32, it can also uh, increase the um, hydrolytic stability uh, of this ester. This was tested the same way that we tested all the other results before. So this evidence suggests that the hydrolytic stability of esters could also be improved with um, adding OSP. So in conclusion, the natural and synthetic esters offer important environmental performance features when uh, formulating for modern environmentally accessible lubricants. When hydrolytic stability is a concern, the inclusion of specific polyalkylene glycols into esters can reduce their rates of hydrolysis. Polyalkylene glycol chemistry and architecture is important in slowing the ester hydrolysis. Specifically, the tri-block copolymers uh, based on EO and PO are the most helpful. Um, select OSPs can also offer benefits and are, and are readily biodegradable. I thank you for your attention, and if you have questions or comments, please contact Martin or myself. Thank you.